All right, so at this point we need to figure out where we're gonna get the weather data from. Now, there's a great site called Weather Underground, and not only is it an awesome uh, weather site, but they make all of their weather data free and available to you through their API. Now, an API is literally just an interface for you to connect to web services and exchange information with this uh, with them. So in this case, we're going to request from Weather Underground data that we want, and we can specify what we're looking for, whether it's you know current conditions, 10-day uh, forecast, and we can specify a particular city or a zip code, and we can request just a bulk response of information that we can then with Python clean it up and pick out just the pieces that we want. And we can use Python to run this request over and over again to collect data over say a range of dates or a range of zip codes or something like that. So what I want you to do is type in uh, W underground API, okay? And that's gonna get us to the Weather Underground API page. So whenever you connect to an API, some of them are just free and open and they don't have any restrictions at all. And you don't have to do anything special. You don't have to sign up or register, but most of them you have to get what's called an API key. An API key is a custom uh, bunch of letters and numbers, almost like a passcode, just for you so that they can tell that you're a registered user and that you're the one requesting the data. And generally there are limits to how many times per minute or per day that you can hit the API. Uh, so they don't want you writing a program that accidentally hits the, their API 50,000 times in a minute. Uh, so it, it will block you out if you get a little crazy. Uh, but generally most APIs are pretty liberal for what for the kind of development purposes. They let you hit the API pretty often and uh, enough certainly to get the job done. So for any API that you're gonna use, there's always a documentation or there really should be. Uh, and most major uh, web apps will have great API documentation. So we'll take a look at the documentation itself. And it's gonna give us right here an example of what it what site you would go to to get back the information that you're looking for. So in this case, current conditions for a US city. So in this case, you can tell by looking at this that uh, we're gonna request current conditions from San Francisco, California. So if we were to take this, this URL and paste it into our browser, we should get back the current conditions from San Francisco. Now that doesn't help us because we don't want to use our web browser to get this data, but it's a good way to see what's going on. But you'll notice here that it says in the middle of this URL, it says your key. That's where you have to put your API key. So uh, anytime you're requesting data from an API, you typically have what's called an endpoint URL, which is this right here. And it almost always will ask you to paste in your API key and then that will allow you to get the data that you want. So in order to do that, you're gonna to have to sign in, create an account, and once, you, once you've done that, you'll be able to get your API key. So let me go ahead and sign in. You go ahead and register for an account. And once that's done, you can go to key settings, and here's your API key. You don't wanna forget this, Okay, and you never want to give this away, so it's blurred out for you right now, but this will be the API key that you will use going forward. So go ahead and copy this. Go back to PyCharm. Type in API underscore key equals parentheses, or excuse me, quotation marks. Paste in your API key. So this sets a variable called API key equal to your actual API key, and that's going to be key because you don't want to type that in over and over again uh, so saving it into a variable will make your life easier down the road so now that we're signed in and we have an api key if we go back to the documentation 
you'll notice that it imports your API key for you here. Okay, so once you're signed in and you have an API key, the documentation is smart enough to sub that in for you. So we can, at this point, copy this, paste it into our browser, and there you go. So this looks confusing, but you can see some really valuable information in there. So they've got the icon uh, for Weather Underground and their information. They've got the location. They've got the zip, the longitude, latitude, and if we keep looking down here, we can see a lot of really good information, right? So the wind direction, the wind speed, uh, the dew point, heat index, wind chill. I mean, everything that you could possibly want to know is here. And we could change this to any other city that we wanted. We can guess uh, like Los Angeles or anything, and it will, in fact, uh, change. So if I want to do like uh, Virginia, Richmond, okay, so now we have the Richmond, Virginia weather. So it's that easy, uh, but this format, which is called JSON, is essentially a capsule for the data, and it's a standard format. And we're going to use Python to scan through this uh, formatted data and pick out just the pieces that we want. And that's where requests will come in handy. So we need to get this into here and we need to strip away all of the brackets and everything and just get the data that we're looking for. So at this point, I'll go ahead and show you how that's done and we'll get started on that.